what is going on everybody welcome back to football therapy with me your host Jan I do hope you are doing well and welcome to today's video if I can learn to talk which is the match review of Chelsea's 1-0 win away in the Johan Cruyff Arena against Ajax in the Champions League man that reporter said why are you so scared of Ajax Frank Lampard that's just my face Frank said turns out it was just his face because Chelsea out Ajax Ajax total football we're going to be getting into the game today and the player performances but before we do I want to remind you there watching this video to subscribe to football therapy if you have not already subscribed because I upload content daily if you're a Chelsea fan or if you're not a Chelsea fan why not subscribe and like this video if you want to help a brother out let me set the scene guys right Chelsea on a five match winning run across all competitions doing pretty well finding some confidence winning in different kind of ways you know grinding results out hammering teams scoring late winners all of that kind of stuff Ajax right so people are like yeah it's not the Ajax of last season they've lost Frankie de Jong and Matthias de Ligt you know but people aren't looking close enough this Ajax team had not lost a game since that loss to Tottenham Hotspur in the Champions League semi-final last season They've been immense. So they haven't lost a game in God knows how many games, a lot. Superb form at home. In their previous two games in the Champions League, in the, that group, they'd won two games 3-0. So coming into this, Chelsea, a lot of people expected Chelsea to fail. But no, they won, and it was a deserved win, and they deserved three points to put them top of Group H, sitting pretty on six points, like Ajax, but they're on top on head-to-head. -head. Superb scenes, ladies and gentlemen. In Frank Lampard's post-match interview, he said this was his most important or best win today. And you can understand that, sure, Chelsea have got a few good wins this season, scored a lot of goals, had great performances. But to go away to Ajax when they're in this form, in this profile of match, when really they needed a result, it's a really huge, huge win for Chelsea and Frank Lampard. Right, so let's talk about this game and player performances and pull up the analysis screen. Boom, here it is. I've used the Who Scored Match Center graphic again to give you guys an idea of the stats and how the game went down. Firstly, Chelsea did line up with a 4-3-3 in the end. Not much change in personnel. I thought Emerson would be coming back in, but Alonso kept his place. As Pilaqueta at right back, Kepa between the sticks. The center back partnership was Tamori and Zuma. And Golo Kante was still out, so the midfield three consisted of Jorginho as the lone pivot. Kovacic flanking his right hand side and young Mason Mount on the left. Tammy Abraham up front with Callum to the door on the left as expected and Willian on the right as expected. As I predicted Tadic came in for Huntelaar for Ajax and they played like a 4-2-3-1 slash 4-3-3 it shifts quite a lot. Um, and yeah, the main danger man, Donny van der Beek, was in there. Hakim Zayek was on the right-hand side. Um, didn't really get into this game that much. Quincy Promise on the left-hand side, and he was threatening this game, but he's been in fine form as well. The new acquisition for Ajax. So let's talk about the game. Even though this was just a 1-0 scoreline, this was a really, really exciting game. Both teams expressed themselves. It was total football from both sides. Now, I do joke about Chelsea and Frank Lampard out football out footballing out Ajaxing Ajax or doing the total of football better I did like a tweet joking around saying Johan Cruyff would have been proud of Chelsea tonight but it was a great game to watch in that first half they were going toe to toe Chelsea were carving out a lot of chances um, it was interesting Tammy Abraham played a deeper role um, people like Mason Mount and Callum Hudson-Odoi were often ahead of him and it was really interesting. There was like a few pragmatic changes in what was an attacking direct style of football. Chelsea were very, very good at playing out of the press. And when you're playing against Ajax, that is necessary. Chelsea had a little bit of luck, a stroke of luck with a goal by Ajax scored by Quincy Promise was ruled offside. And it was very, very close, either by like a toenail or part of his shoulder that was just off it was a great goal by them maybe Chelsea could have done a little bit better defensively but that's the break Chelsea needed in that game in the first half Callum Hudson-Odoi was seeing so so much of the ball everything was going through him he was getting into the opposition penalty area and carrying the ball dribbling with the ball very close to his feet and you know what you could tell the opposition were very very frightened of him Des didn't actually want to get anywhere near him and he kept getting opportunities to play the ball off or take a shot he still hasn't found the shooting boots just yet, but in terms of his general play in open play, Callum Hudson-Odoi, 
this season since he's come back into the team he has been excellent he'll be gutted he didn't get a goal or an assist in this game but you know it was a tight game but in that first half he was very very good if even though he sort of burnt out a little bit in the second half. On the opposite side of that spectrum, Willian was completely anonymous in the first half. And bearing in mind, he's been in good form lately. He had a you know, decent enough industry running around, but to be, for me, for how he's been playing recently, he needed to do better and more of the ball needed to go through Willian and perhaps more switches of play should have happened. In terms of equal quality, the second half kind of died out a little bit for Ajax. Now, I've maintained, and I said this in my instant live stream after the match frank lampard was adamant in pre-season he wanted his team to be fitter than all other opposition hence him doing the double training sessions and people got really annoyed when you're not in immaculate shape and you're having to do double training sessions you get annoyed with the manager so this chelsea side does have really really good stamina and fitness and that showed in the second half because both these teams in ix and chelsea high tempo high octane football both uh, deploying a high press system so there's a lot of energy burned in that first half, but the Premier League stamina and Frank Lampard's hard tra hardcore training earlier in the season started to pay off and you saw Ajax were getting more tired than Chelsea in that second half. And this is where Super Frankie Lampard pounced and made, he's being held for these substitutions, but I mean obviously it's something that he'll do in most games, but putting on Batshuayi and Christian Pulisic and guess what? They combined for a late goal, which turned out to be the winner. Now, Batshuayi came on, he had a golden chance where he skied it over. He always tries to do that same finish where he tries to put it in the roof of the net. And that's what happened in the end with his goal. It actually went underneath the crossbar, which looks lovely, but you wish he maybe shot it maybe an inch lower just to prevent you from having a heart attack. Generally, they're really lethal clinical finishes, and he's always done that at Michy Batshuayi. So he basically should have scored that first one, but as long as you've got him on the pitch, he will get chances. You can critique Michy Batshuayi for not finishing certain chances every now and again, but the point is he gets himself in those positions and makes himself available, so he's actually very good at that. Chelsea go and see out the 1-0 win, and Frank Lampard's final change is a pragmatic one. He takes off Callum hudson Adoy and puts on Reese James, which is obviously a more of a defensive substitution, and it worked, and Chelsea got all three points. But I want to talk about a few more player performances in this game. So you've probably lapped up the stats on the graphic, so let's get rid of the analysis screen. Michy Batshuayi got the goal, and therefore he deserves a lot of plaudits, but Tammy Abraham, although he was a little bit anonymous, or seemed anonymous, I think he had a little bit of a different role today, and he was dropping deeper and trying to play and advancing forwards on his flanks, so I think he had good industry. Hudson Odoi obviously like I said in the first half was very very good but burnt out a little bit but he was certainly shaking up the defense of Ajax. Although Willian in the second half was a little bit better for me generally it was a bit disappointing and that's probably why he was the one to come off for uh, Christian Pulisic plus also we know Callum hudson Doy can move over to the right wing like he used to play for Maurizio Sarri. Both centre-backs were very very good now it's to this point I need to highlight this was the best team performance defensively we've seen from this Chelsea side this season. Sure Tamori made a couple of mistakes and Zuma bailed him out I know who scored gave Tamori the man of the match awards maybe because of the way he advanced with the ball as well and did good ball progression but in terms of defensively I probably edge Zuma on top of him, but if you want to talk about a defensive masterclass, for me, it's Cesar Azpilicueta. He had Quincy Promise and Tagliafico on toast for the most part. He was superb on that right flank, and it reminded me of when Chelsea beat Manchester City at home 2-0 last season. I've said it a few times, Azpilicueta was imperious in that game. He was an absolute titanic defender and he was in this game as well he was so so vital to keeping Ajax out and it was really superb and it's lovely to see because loads of people were questioning Azpilicueta at the beginning of the season when he was in really poor form whether that's because he was getting you know to terms with Lampard's tactics or fitness or not I'm not sure but people were saying oh it's Branislav Ivanovic mark two like you know form just falling off a cliff not for Cesar he absolutely demonstrated immense Defended defensive ability in this game. It was awesome. Even though he scored the winner last game I thought he was really poor in open play Marcus Alonso. He went back to playing better today You can tell he is slow. He is slow and you worry about him when you you know young Ajax Opposition offensive players are darting around him and you see him that slow turning circle and just generally He really slowly defends the ball, but he was good in this game. He deserves props Marcus Alonso and he actually combined very well with Callum Hudson-Odoi on the left-hand side in that first half, which is nice to see because I remember 
the combination will play breaking down so, so much when he played with Eden Hazard on that side. But it looks like he's got a better relationship or chemistry with hudson Adoy, which is surprising, but cool. Mason Mount had a much better game, especially after last time out when he was a bit sort of anonymous against Newcastle. It's great industry, had a couple of chances as well, shot some goal. He was basically the kind of energetic, young, direct, aggressive player you needed in this game. Uh, we'll get on to Christian Pulisic, but I think them two rotating, they do offer something different, so it's a very, very good couple of options to have and he was very good in this game. Mr. Consistency for the moment for me, Jorginho, he's just always having a good performance. I don't really sing his praises too much now because for me he's turned into what Cesar Espliqueta used to be, just a midfield version. Uh, always performing well, had a really good game this game, aggressive, a leader on the pitch. And similarly Mateo Kovacic, oh, Frank Lampard's been basically saying really really good things about him recently, yeah, he's a nice lad, he's a really talented player. He deserves to start. Obviously, him starting might have had something to do with N'Golo Kante's fitness. But he was superb and he demonstrated his dribbling and ball progression ability in this game again. And you really, really needed that in this kind of game when you're playing out of the Ajax press. So, you know, he press resistant, retains position, dribbles out, progresses the ball. Superb Mateo Kovacic. And of course, the super subs. I mean, Rhys James didn't really touch the ball, but... Again, that Dortmund connection, the chemistry between Pulisic and Michy, apparently it really genuinely is a thing. Um, you know, superb combinations. They both deserve loads of praise for this game. And hopefully, I, I said recently, I think Pulisic's being handled perfectly. So we'll see him more and more. And just generally good vibes around the team. Superb performance, three points, away win, clean sheet, lovely. I want to hear your thoughts on the game and your comments on the performances. Get down in the comments section below. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. If you've enjoyed the content, like this video. And remember to subscribe if you're new. And if you want to talk to me about football more, you can join the Football Therapy Discord via the Patreon link in the description below. You can follow me on social media, Instagram, Twitter, at Football Yannick. Follow me. Oh my old guys, you enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.